Hello and welcome to your favorite comic book YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. And I'm Tom Scholey, author of I Am Stan. And today we are going to look at the finest book I own, maybe the finest book I've ever seen, finest book I've ever touched, an absolute work of art in terms of books. All right, everyone, I want to remind you that we will be at Baltimore Comic Con September 8th, 9th, and 10th. It is a great comic book convention for comic book fans. If you haven't been there, I encourage you to check it out. And do wear your cartoonist kayfabe t-shirts and hats. We love to see those out in the audience. Let everybody know you're part of the, uh, part of the group. Also, we have a cartoonist kayfabe Patreon. There are three different levels that will get you access to our videos early. At the King Kayfaber level, you will get access to all of our videos first including sitting in on the recording session, giving us feedback in live time, and definitely being the first person in line when you see a book on our show that you want to add to your collection. You'll be the first one to buy it before it disappears or goes up in price. Yeah, West Coast Avengers says we, we should open up our WCW trading cards and he'll send us more, more packs <laughs> after. <laughs> well, we are going to open up something today. Tom, this has your name on it. Written all over it. We've already opened our copies of this book it is a masterpiece, and I am eager to see you do the same. I'm, I'm here to find out what's in this mystery package. Can't wait. It looks like there's some tape on the side. Like, you could probably okay, do yeah. right there is the spot Let me to see. pull it open. Yeah, good. I'm glad we got your sleeves in the mixture. Yes, yeah, so let you know. A little yeah. young. A little bit young. go do you smell it yet oh yeah this is really nice love the orange you need to take the sword to it or no uh, let me see it, <laughs> maybe just maybe just to get this little corner started get the it's so there. scary to bring a sharp edge next to this <laughs> whatever this is <laughs> it's orange he spray paint that stuff? I was going to say, even the, the packaging on it's here got is like a, a stenciled... Yeah, it's got like a tacky quality to it. And then, yeah, you see that sort of airbrushy... When, kind of... when we opened the box, which there were three packages. When we opened the box, you get hit with a whiff of aerosol. And very curious, like, like what could this be? The second I opened up that box, and like I knew what it was, man. I knew exactly what it was. And this dude made a book I wanted... To own yeah. my entire life. That hmm. does not exist. Okay, here's a clue. <gasps> oh my. This, this, I didn't realize. Whoa. Wow. We got Atomic spelled backwards. Komoda. Pronounced Komoda. Like the Komoda dragon. Show that uh, spine and right there. And look at this spine. Beautiful spine. Yeah, this, oh man. So what you're looking at is the complete Miracle Man. Yeah, and take you see the here. logo there on the spine of Optic Press. This is uh, one person's operation. Andrew Bosey is the creator behind this. You'll need that for the uh, 3D, the 3D issue, section, of course. Yeah. Wow, it looks like there's like felt. Yeah, there's felt on there the inside of the, the inside. of the uh, carrying case. Amazing. You, you need to like take the slip, take the uh, dust jacket off, and fill the the leather that the book is made oh, of. Like the, like. Yeah, this goat is goat skin. Really Goat skin leather. And by the way, oh. I've been corresponding with Andrew all week. I have a new crush. Like, I'm in love with Optic Press. And uh, he said oh, the best man. way to treat this leather is to handle this book without those little white cotton gloves that, that mm -hmm. we all wear at the Billy Ireland because the oils of your hand will actually kind of oh. work that leather. Reinforce it. There's some websites at the, at the end there. So, so this collects, and he, he edited and designed this thing himself. Uh, all of the Miracle Man works that were published here in the States. Let me highlight some yeah. of his uh, contact info first here for everybody. We'll do this again before the video's over, but you can see more examples. Um, he is this small press, opticsbinding.com, and the Instagram, opticsbinding. He puts up videos of the books that he makes, so you can see that stuff at home. I know there are other makers out there, like I have made a few books myself, embarrassed to show them on this video <laughs> next to his. But this is probably the nicest book making that I have ever seen mm -hmm. in any way. Our, our headbands, hand-sewn mm -hmm. silk, these things are just, I've never seen a book this well show, constructed. Show this piece to the King Kayfaber so that they can get on board right now. Yeah, I'm three pages in 
and it's already like blowing my mind. And this is original design. Like, yeah. like he he's he's you know choosing the order of operations. Uh, he gangs up all the letters pages from the Eclipse books all in one complete section. He uh, had included Komoda, the oh, that's to a the good Tomorrows inclusion. book. Yeah. And also, he's you know got... What? Hang on. L linger here just to show some of what the, the extra extras, stuff, yeah. the he, extra material he's, is. He's so thorough that uh, I didn't know this until I got my hands on, war on some Warrior uh, magazines myself. Like, Alan Moore did even more stories with some of those characters. Yeah. And like the warp smiths mm -hmm. or whatever, right? Those stories are in here. Yeah. They are not published in the Eclipse comics. Includes the issue number one that Eclipse published because it was recolored for the trade paperbacks. Spent about a year putting this material together for the book, cleaning certain things up, getting scans of the color samples that he liked, um, and he does these in editions. I think there were nine of these that he made. I think he said ten. Ten, very small wow. editions. Um, he did one on Wally Wood that is all of his 70s self-published material that is, watch the video. I mean, you'll be drooling if you're like me. Uh, reproduced the complete raw magazine at size with this kind of extensive notes and background material as well. And it's just, like I say, an absolute work of art in every way possible. These are single pages, not, you know, like two pages folded in half, yeah. which means... He is drilling into them and hand sewing. It takes about five hours to sew one of these together of continuous work. I just can't get over the craft of this. Apparently, uh, his family were printers. So, like, he's coming at this as mm -hmm. a second or third generation person who appreciates print and the history of print. This was what I was wondering about the trend. Because when you have this sort of retro stuff, like, I thought, well, maybe this is what became of the Eclipse paper. Maybe it turned into this. But it's like, oh, no, this is, this is a choice to make yeah. it look... And if you yeah, go really to the works. back, you can see the, uh, like I say, the original, you know, first version uh, color treatment, which is kind of instructive to see. But even this is pushed a little bit, you know, um, because there is cleanup involved in all mm -hmm. of this. Absolutely. And, and, I, and I think, you know, he used the trade paperbacks. So those are very expensive and you have to destroy them. Right. Like you have to disassemble those yeah. books to, so that you could put these things on the scanner to properly... Uh, you know, get the, get them to scan without any warping or skewing of, of the, the imagery. Uh, it is ridiculous, like, how fortuitous this was, because we did a little walkthrough. Whenever we were first figuring out our audio vi video stuff for Cartoonist Kayfabe, Tom, you, you me, Ben Mara, and uh, Jim Mahfood, we went through the Alan Moore run. And uh, that's that's nearly five years ago. Yeah, And this is a comic that I like to revisit mm -hmm. every now and then. It's been that long. And I was about to pull my issues out and and get them ready to go. And this book shows up. It's like the dude read my mind. Yeah. This video is brought to you by the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. Uh, there are three levels of support at our Patreon. And the King Kayfabers get access to our live stream recording sessions uh, that make it possible to mitigate the Kayfabe effect. They also get the videos before anybody else. So make sure uh, you uh, support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel and get that early access. Ultimately, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. You're looking at a healthy sample of our bibliography right in front of you. Jimmy's next book is going to be Street Angel, Princess of Poverty. It's coming to you in November. It's going to be a companion piece to Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, in that it collects all of the uh, material that was published prior to the Image Comics release. Jimmy also has Hulk Grand Design out there in the wild. Limited copies available. Make sure you get your hands on that as soon as possible. And uh, the latest comic that Jimmy has right now, which is sold out, but he is he has promised to uh, reprint this thing. True Crime Funnies. Three nonfiction stories, including uh, one that has a little something to do with some wrestling. Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is coming to you in October, just in time for the holidays, collecting all four volumes of Hip Hop Family Tree with 150 pages of additionals. Also for the holiday season is X-Men Grand Design Trilogy, which is going to include the out-of-print X-Men Grand Design works that I put together, about a 250-260 page trade paperback. Red Room is the current focus. Two trade paperbacks of Red Room are out there right now. The comic I'm putting, putting out these days is Red Room Crypto Killers. It's going to be four issues total. Three issues are out right now. The centerpiece uh, for issue three, the backup feature, includes the first appearance of the characters that I'm using in my daily strip 
which I'm serializing on my Patreon. Tom's in the house with us this round. He's got the hardcover I Am Stan coming to you sooner than later. I believe it comes out in September. We did a big video on this, and you guys showed up in a big, bad way and, and uh, started to do your pre-orders. Make sure you get your hands on this. This is a definitive documentary on Stan Lee. And uh, the paperback version of his Jack Kirby biography are com is coming out uh, sooner than later as well. Now that we're done paying the bills, back to the video. It's just an amazing achievement. Whenever you think about the amount of time and resources that pour into this, he does not um, really sell, you know, he, d he doesn't like redo them. There's one run. Sure. Yeah. Mostly he gives them away. If there are some for sale, they're sold at cost. You know, this is really like he writes extensively about his idea of making books of this quality and suggest this is ideally how like Marvel and DC or any of the people that are publishing books, they should start with the premier edition. Like this right. is the mm -hmm. highest quality edition. And then you have the resources. You have the well scanned pages, the color corrected pages, all those things that you can then, okay, filter these down yeah, into the mass backwards. editions yeah. and the paperback editions. So, so at cost, what do you think this book uh, is with all the materials and the leather and the time equity and stuff? Well, the time isn't factored in, but okay. it just costs for like the printing and all the tools, the leather and stuff, probably about a thousand dollars. So he sent three thousand dollars worth of stuff, and again, not factoring in the time that is just for right. sure. Yeah, you know. Yeah, we we a all year sort plus of, of production. say goodbye to that stuff when you do like creative work. Yeah, it's really, it's just remarkable. Like, and you know, you look at this stuff, and I understand Marvel's DC. Everybody's just churning stuff out, but the idea that like you could have this level of craft associated with a book, I'm surprised more people aren't trying to get into this. As we were corresponding, he was saying one way he could see this being used is on Kickstarters. This could be the high-end version. Yeah, right. You could do six of these or ten of these as like mm -hmm. your, your highest-end version of the material. Um, imagine the Faust, you know, the six amazing copies of Faust at this level. Um, or any, any book that you love out there. You yeah. know, especially comics are just, they're built for this. These comics that people pour their, their soul onto these pages, they deserve this treatment, you know, at, at the highest level. These yeah. are just gorgeous, right? Yeah. <laughs> this this is the the best book that I have in my whole library. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know what the second best is. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I would tell everybody, we'll flash it again at the end of the video, but go follow this guy. You know, even as just a creative uh, inspiration to you, there's so much that he's doing that I love bookmaking, and this is like levels that I had never seen before. Yeah, absolutely, man. Also, a thousand-page book. This is like like a, like an old family Bible or something. When he sent this package, it was a forty-pound package, and there's three books in the thing. So, uh, if you factor in the the weight of the box, you're still pushing past. You're still pushing past ten pounds, maybe fifteen pounds. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's quite an accomplishment. These Buckingham mm -hmm. issues, I've been going through that in this book. Because uh, I've this is another series I've not read from beginning to end in right, order, yeah, right. and I need to do that. But the Buckingham stuff, it's blowing my mind at what uh -huh. he's bringing in terms of different style. Like this stuff has to be done on a photocopier. Right. There's so much interesting visuals here. You just wonder, like, who's coming up with some of these ideas? You know, how much is in game and script? How much is Buckingham really trying to figure stuff out, or knowing what he can do, or pushing what he can do? to deliver this kind of visuals. Well, when we did those earlier vids, you were not included, Jimmy. And I would actually, and we also didn't do the microscope view. Yeah. So we could go through this again and with the microscope view, with your point of view added and with five years more experience added to just my knowledge and we could handle this again. Have, have either of you seen like the current ones that are coming at that, like no. Mark Buckingham and, and Neil Gaiman, because it's kind of an interesting story because he already did like a version of them, you know, back in like the late '80s or early '90s, and then that got scrapped. It never came out, and so now he's like Mark Buckingham's completely redrawing them, recomposing them into these like double-page compositions. It's it's really interesting from a process point of view. So beyond the Buckingham stuff, this dude also collects those uh, apocrypha or, or however you say that word, apocrypha, apocrypha uh, stories. So you get those ancillary bits that. Guys like, you know, Alex Ross did a story. Mm -hmm. uh, I think maybe Matt Wagner did one or two. Yep. And then a bunch of, like, the staples of, like, Eclipse comics. The guys who were drawing, like, New Wave and DN Agents and shit like that. 
Yeah, it, it is an extremely yeah, here's the, uh, stuff from the, Warrior Magazine. Mm-hmm. Extremely and it's, thorough. Yeah, it's part of the continuity. It is. Man, yeah. it makes you understand these characters a little bit more. And it's Steve Dillon. You know, there was no Steve Dillon yeah. uh, p- stories in the Eclipse books. Yeah, it's it's really shocking to me looking at at, at a book like this. Like, oh, and the 3D. Yeah, yeah, the 3D it looks pretty good too. I went through this story with glasses on. Yeah. And yeah, very very good job on all of that. The reproduction of that, very exciting to see. It's just a, um, again, it's a it's a resource, but I do think that people are interested in book binding. You know, like we've I've certainly crossed paths with a number of people who make books not at this level. But you have all the levels to choose from. Here are your letters pages, so including those. Mm-hmm. Love a good letters page. Pinups that would have appeared in the back of the, mati- of the comic books. There are ads that are reproduced. It's about 50, 60 pages of just the letters. Yes. And then the, the, the crown jewel of this is the long out of print, probably never to be reprinted, Komoda, the Tomorrow's book. Yeah. Cover gallery here at the end. It's fun to think too about like how do you do this? Should the should the covers be with the content? You know, all, all I, choices. I love a thoughtful book designer and how they put together the body of the the content of the absolutely of the book. all all choices that need to be ironed out, man. Man, these covers, Dave McKean, mm-hmm. beautiful covers, Barry Windsor Smith. It's amazing. Always love that cover. <laughs> They're so good. The trade paperback covers and stuff. Yeah, that's the All these uh, collections. And here's Nick your Anglin. Komoda uh, companion piece. Yeah, I- I've been wanting this book for yeah. a long time. Like uh, when it came out, that was when I still was like semi broke, and uh, just could not afford too much. So it's been long out of print and very expensive. Right. Yeah, I, like I passed, 200, 300 bucks. I passed up on it and I figured it's one of those things. Oh, it'll be there. It'll be you know. You just it's here now. now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Didn't have to wait too long. It's it's so great to have this kind of stuff packaged in it too, as giving context to what is this magnificent book. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's so necessary. And once again, like this this can only happen really in a in a customized situation like like this because you know it's a tomorrow's book. And and let's not even talk about just the ownership rights of Miracle Man mm-hmm. as, as they are. Like who the fuck knows who owns what. Uh, this would never happen if it wasn't for an extremely dedicated craftsman. And we are uh, the very lucky recipients. And he doesn't just do comics. Like, one of his first works was Thomas Pike and, um, like, like, zines that he had been published in, collecting those zines. And it's pretty interesting. If you follow this guy, you can read about some of his projects. And just finding the source material in order to make a book like any of the books he makes, that's a big step. Yeah. It can be super expensive. You might have to find other collectors that are willing to lend you stuff. And then figure out how you can get what you need without destroying yeah. those those copies. But uh, I, I don't know, man. It, we talk a lot about making on this show. I find such inspiration when I see somebody that's just making something, especially a labor of love of this sort. And it just doesn't. I don't know that it'll get better. I don't have expectations uh-huh. to see better books than this. No, but before we get out of here, though, you have to show the very last page. Where this is your original first issue at size? Where the dude, like customize the personalize them to us in print so like this texture is the eclipse version but for the modern day sequences he like yeah. filters it out right should have tom's name in there somewhere oh yeah yep. just, this copy belongs to tom <laughs> that's awesome how cool Amazing. is that huh? yes love and it. you see the optics press number seven what that means is he's done six other books up to this point. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he's got one, uh, you know, in the works right now. But just a pure inspiration, man. It, uh, it blows me away. It, it kind of restores my faith in humanity, the yeah. art, the making. That like this is stuff that a guy made this with his hands, yeah. right? Well, it's Unbelievable. A, it's it, all the inspiring stuff is on the grassroots level. You know, it's it's like at the corporate level where you start getting disillusioned. Ian Chowgren has sent us books that he has made, kind of artist edition style books, and I believe he now has some jobs that he is doing for bigger publishers. So it is exciting that people care about this stuff enough to make the books that they want to exist, but also now they can put that influence, they can apply that as uh, some of the bigger publishers show that they care about their what they're making and they want to bring in these new voices. And it's just awesome, man. It's just awesome. It's crazy. It feels like I may have died like 15 years ago, and this is all just some sort of <laughs> right. fever dream, you know? But I hope I never wake up from it. Great cover, too. Like this, uh, between like the most horrific yep. panel or page of, of the whole series and then this 
Bam Biff Pal kind of stuff on top of it. Yeah, all the all the creative choices in this book, I feel like, stand up. And I bet if you talk to Andrew about him, he'd be able to talk extensively about why he did this or that. You know, like the desaturation in that background is really a nice choice to make the, the, the Silver Age look pop. It's just great stuff. Yeah, like off the bat, you could, you could guess that this guy, like whenever you watch those documentaries on Helvetica or the Linotype mm -hmm. machine and they're in the home of an intense graphic designer and everything is meticulous and every choice of like spoons hanging from their little holders are like thought out. I just get the sense that this fella ain't too different than those people that have the, you know, very sensible glasses and are w well groomed and all that kind of shit. This is too, uh, too dedicated man to be able to turn that switch off. Yeah. And I hope all those makers out there that are watching this first stop, go, go start following him. There's a lot of resources that he posts and uh, shows off that work, man. Watch him flip through some of his other books. They're, they're all this level. You know, they're all fantastic. Amazing. Humbling and inspiring at the same time. Amazing, man. Good to go. Thank you, yeah. Andrew. Yes, Love Andrew. It. Thank you yep. so much, man. Big thanks. To send these things in triplicate? Jesus Christ. Okay, Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. We're a daily YouTube channel, and uh, the best. We're a daily YouTube channel, so uh, we have more than a thousand videos up there live as we speak. And uh, we might have talked about your favorite comics. Hit the little magnifying glass on the front page, pop in your favorite titles, see if we talked about your faves. If we did not, please uh, don't hesitate to put some stuff in the comments. Let us know what comics you need us to cover, and we will get to them as soon as possible. The Patreon is there for the King of Kayfabers to support Cartoonist Kayfabe, and uh, one of the rewards you get from that is that uh, live stream recording session, of which we have about three dozen people in there right now who are totally going crazy over uh, this book that we just showed off. But uh, in uh, other situations, mitigates the Kayfabe effect. We talk about something sexy that people haven't thought about in a little while. The King Kayfabers get all the cheapest copies off the aftermarket. Ultimately, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. You're looking at a healthy bibliography of what we have put out uh, to date, but there's some new stuff coming out. The Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is going to be here in October, in time for the Christmas season. 504 pages, 150 pages of additionals that are not in those first four volumes. It is the 10th anniversary of Hip Hop Family Tree, the 50th anniversary of hip hop as a culture. So this book here is the ultimate statement on uh, Hip Hop Family Tree. Make sure you get it. Look at that, man. That's a Tom Scioli yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, cameo appearance, man. I was too intimidated to do the da Jack Kirby artwork there. Uh, this is not the only holiday effort that will be coming out in 2023. The X-Men Grand Design Trilogy trade paperback comes out in November. It's going to be the size of the typical trade paperbacks, and it's going to include the out-of-print X-Men Grand Design volumes. The comics I'm working on now is Red Room. Two trade paperbacks of that exist, and this is the last series of Red Room called uh, Crypto Killers. Uh, three issues out right now, one more issue to come, uh, but make sure you get your hands on Red Room Crypto Killers issue three because this backup strip is the prototypical first appearance of uh, the characters that I'm going to be exploring in my daily strip, which is now serializing on my own Patreon. Tom, tell the people what you have coming out. Well, September is going to be big for me. We got um, I Am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee. And we've got Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics in soft cover. And I also have Jack Kirby's Star Warriors the Adventures of Adam Starr and the Solar Legion coming from Image Comics. It's a lost Jack Kirby comic that I've brought into the modern day. You can pick up and pre-order my next Street Angel book, Street Angel Princess of Poverty. This collects all the Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel Deadly Girl Alive. Both of these are available from Image Comics or will be soon if you pre-order. Uh, True Crime Funnies is my latest self-published comic featuring three non-fiction stories, uh, one about a cop, and two, about professional wrestling. So if you haven't picked this one up yet, it is actually out of print. You can read it uh, on patreon.com slash jimrug. You can download it on jimrug.com. And if you wait patiently, I will have some of these available before the end of the year. You can also pick up Hulk Grand Design while supplies last. This is sold out at the distribution level, which means it'll be sold out everywhere soon. So if your store still has one and you don't, you might want to pick that up sooner rather than later. Not the only way to support the channel. Jimmy, let them know. 
You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, hats, mugs, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. There you have it. Keep the channel rocking. We can make those videos on the daily. Given those marching orders, Jimmy, we'll be on our way. Make more comics.